Hi there, welcome back to the Rare Book Views channel where I hope we're gonna take a look at some rare books. I am a collector and a reader and a frugal shopper and I love a good library and bookstore. Today I am going to a bookstore which is one of my favorite things to do. This is a charity shop, it's in a library and it's in a refurbished library? That's not the right word because they completely leveled it and then rebuilt it. It's an awesome community center. It used to have a used bookstore in the basement that was huge and kind of a mouse maze of cavernous, sort of ill-matched bookshelves. It was really fun, but it was disorganized. And now they've completely rebuilt the library. There's a really cool playground. There's a cool, there's a bunch of like activities. It's very community center, more than library now, but it has a beautiful library. And it does have a used bookstore, but it's kind of coming back. So I can never tell. Are they gonna have a lot of books? Are they gonna have books that I want? I am looking today for, I'm always looking for collectible copies, rare books, um, nice shelf presence type book copies of books that I loved as a kid. I really love to find special editions of the books that I read a lot when I was little. I'm a big fan of John Blair's I'm Missing Three, but I have a lot of them. Those were my favorite as a kid. Anne of Green Gables, C.S. Lewis, all of the illustrators that kind of go along with those. I'm a big Alice in Wonderland fan. So I'm hoping to find, you never know when you might find a treasure that comes into that category. I also really like classics. So sometimes when I run across a nice copy of something I haven't read, that's sort of in the classics category. I think if you're gonna read a classic and you're gonna invest the time and sort of mental wherewithal, you need a really good copy. So we'll see if I find anything like that. I have a long list of popular fiction that I want to read and sometimes rather than wait for the library I just buy a copy for a few dollars and enjoy it and then pass it on to a friend or give it back to the library or find a new home for it. I am slightly running out of shelf space. So anything like that and then I do have friends who have submitted their requests so you never know what I'll find. Let's go see what they have today. Well, I did not find a ton of books today, but I did have a ton of fun. It was really interesting. They have a they have a gym at the library and they have courts that can be set up in different, you can have basketball, you can have tennis, you can have pickleball. And they had a basketball, a kids basketball tournament going on and there were kids running around and there were all these games. It was very exciting. You can check out a basketball at the library and play on the, on the basketball court. I think it's super cool. And there are a bunch of middle school I think and families and it was just really fun to see the library so alive and vibrant it seems like we don't use our libraries as much as we used to and I love that this one has figured out how to make it really serve the community it was really fun and the used bookstore that's in the library was also pretty busy because there were a ton of people hanging out the library and that was really fun it was fun to see it kind of people looking for books and being excited about reusing finding a new home for books that was really cool i did find a couple things i found one of these uh my friend has sons and one of them really likes this series they are msrp just about five dollars they're a dollar at the used bookstore which is 80% off if my math is right. 
So that's amazing. And I text her, they have these ones, and she said, oh, we need this one. So that feels like a big victory. And then I found this really cool one, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, not the US edition. The, I thought it was the UK edition at first, which are really neat because J.K. Rowling wrote these books originally for the British audience, so the slang and spellings and the sort of colloquialisms are British, which is often not the case. Usually when books are written in English, they're American English. But because these were written in England, the first editions, the original editions, are the British ones, and then the American ones came later, and they revised some of the language. So if you are of my generation and you read these books many, many times, when you read the British ones, it is really fun to see the differences and the different spellings. So I thought that was this one, um, but it is not. Bloomsbury is the UK publisher, the original one, and the story is that J.K. Rowling submitted this book to many publishers and was rejected, and Bloomsbury picked it up. A fairly small press, now a very big deal in England, but it also says Rain Coast here, so there's two publishers, and on the copyright page, it says here a couple references to first published in Great Britain in 2007 by Bloomsbury, and then it says this edition published in Canada in 2007, so same year, by Rain Coax, and you can see it's in British Columbia, and here's the original. So I thought that was really cool. This was $6. It says 2007, and the number line, so often modern books will have this line, it makes it really easy that if the publisher prints a new run or they make a change and it's a different edition, they just take a number off this line. This one has the one, so I think this probably is a first Canadian edition. And for comparison, I happen to have the UK editions. This is mine, and I had forgotten that I actually bought this at Shakespeare and Company in Paris, which is a wonderful bookstore. If you're ever in Paris, please go there. It's a wonderful place and they have books in, I think, multiple languages. The bookstore is legendary. It has been there for a very long time. It survived World War II. The owners were definitely on the right side of the rules here and not great fans of the Nazis and um, sort of suffered for a bit because of that. So it's great to kind of go pay homage to this bookstore that is a little bit of a bastion to freedom of speech and what is it? Liberty, democracy, I can't remember the third one. Okay, so I got this there, and it was I was really excited to have a reason to buy a book at Shakespeare and Company. Um, and it's fun to look back at this and remember that, so thank you. Um, and this one you can see, it doesn't have a number line. It's a slightly different copyright page. And on this one, it just says copyright 2007, and it has the first published in Great Britain. So this line is the same as the one that's Canadian, but this one is the British one, so it just says where it was British published in England, and then it actually says first edition. It doesn't have the number line at all. So this is a true first, I believe. Um, there are often sort of more publisher points that would distinguish the true first edition from another publishing run, but as far as I know, this is the first. And you can see on the spine here, it just says Bloomsbury, whereas the Canadian one looks almost exactly the same. And it just has this extra thing for the Rain Coast Press. So I thought it was really cool. I've never seen this edition before that I know of. I have seen some Canadian British um, versus British Harry Potters before, but I don't think I've seen this one. So that was really neat. And it was $6, which is not bad for Harry Potter. Um, and I was really interested to bring it home and kind of investigate it. I don't need to keep it. I do have both versions. I have the Americans and the UK one, so I don't need the Canadian ones. So I'll probably post that on my eBay page and see if anyone else would like to give it a home. Um, they aren't really that expensive. I think you can get a hardback Harry Potter, not US, from a US shipper. This is the thing, trying to get it where you don't really have to pay exorbitant coming from England uh, shipping fees. But I don't know for the Canadian ones. So for British ones, it's usually maybe 10 to $20. It does have the one, so I think it is a first edition I don't know, that might give me 50 cents, uh, but it is worth more than $6. So I believe I'll get the money back in, in an education, so for basically for free. And that means it was a really productive day. I didn't find anything else to bring home with me, but I had a really great time browsing the stacks, and I hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, thank you again. I've said this before. The people who watch this and send me comments, you make my day. I love that people are so positive and kind on the internet. Whew. 
gives me faith in humanity. So if you enjoyed this, please subscribe or uh, like or give me a comment. Let me know what you're collecting. Let me know if you had a good day at a bookstore. And thanks so much. Happy reading.